finally, finally, I've organized the shop and I'm narrowing it down to the Torx bit tips exclusively in a Sedge Tool Shop and I'm gonna teach you why in this video. All right, Sedge, what are we working on? Well, I wanna step you through today the different bit tips that are, are available out there that I've used in woodworking over the years. But as you know, through this year, I've slowly gotten rid of a lot of my different screws in the shop. Mm -hmm. I still have a few around, but the screws I've gone to have the Torx bit tip, okay? And whether it's the quick screws I have or the GRKs I have, and I wanna go through the reasons why with you. Okay, sounds good. All right, so, so why'd you switch to just Torx? Okay, so I was getting really confused sometimes, and. The reason I'm gonna cover different bit types with you, if you've ever been up on a ladder and you're doing an installation on something, and someone used the Phillips tip, someone used a slotted, someone used the Torx, I'm just tired of in this shop of what we build, so I wanted to go to one single screw type, okay. or bit type. And it's really important because it gets really frustrating where you, you're disassembling something, you're putting something together and you go, oh my goodness gracious, I got all these different bits that I have to have. Yep. I wanted to narrow it down. I wanted to get it consistent. All right, so what are some of the other bit types? Okay, good. You're still gonna need a series of different bit, uh, one inch bit tips to put in your magnetic bit holder. Okay. But there's some of them that are just so, for me, problematic because you want to uh, eliminate what is known as cam out when you put torque on. So the one you can't get a, away from because of, and you see it in your house, mm -hmm. around what? The electrical. Yep, the electrical. They're called slotted. And you'll also see them on uh, certain hardware from old chest, okay, like right here. You see the slotted here. But I need slotted screwdrivers because of all my hand planes, whether it's on the cap iron or the knobs and some of the adjustments. Okay. okay. So you have to be very careful because they cam out easy. The slotted screws were invented in the 1800s. They were the first type of screw. When you, and I always have a series of different blades that I put in and they're not good for assembly because they cam out really quick. Okay. Now you have all the different blades. When I choose a blade for like this, this is a, a antique uh, slotted screw. I always take the screw and you don't want it wider than the tip. This is a pan head. Okay. Okay. But you don't want to have too much play in there. So I'll choose something like this where that bit is about perfect because it's the thickness that goes in there and it's the, basically the same width of that. So okay. I will get less camo. Okay, so this is a piece of hardware that I took off an old chest. And this may look like a Phillips, but a Phillips is in the uh, center is usually recessed. This is where I use a flat, whether I need to grab it here or here. Oh, okay. Okay, so don't mistake some of these, because if I would have put a Phillips in there, which we'll talk about next, that will cam that out. So you always have to have a series of these slotted bit tips. All right, Sedge, what's the next one? Okay, the most popular. It was developed and patented in 1932 by a guy named Phillips. Hey, Mo! <laughs> so it is the most popular screw type. And you gotta remember, there's different sizes. There's one, two, and three. And a Phillips is basically a cross, but there's actually a slight recess in the middle. This is, and this is a drywall screw, and this is why it's so popular. All your drywall is hung with what? Uh, Phillips, and it just fits in the recess like this. Okay, but you do get cam out with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you always have to look at your tips, but there's a lot less cam, because you have four, uh, crosses here, okay, to okay. Uh, eliminate some of the camo. All right, Sedge, what's the next one? Okay, now this is the one that everybody gets confused on. It's not a Phillips, it's a posi drive, and we've done videos on them before. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a posi drive screw, come in here, Chris, so everybody can see this. If we look at the very tip, there's extra lines in there. Okay, you'll see the cross, but there's extra lines. And if you look at the bit tip, there's a secondary spline inside those other uh, splines for the Phillips. Mm -hmm. So if I used the Phillips on a posi drive, you would get camming out. Mm -hmm. But you'll have 
all that extra uh, surface to turn those posi drive screws. You see this a lot on these coarse head screws when you're doing assembly of hardware, uh, whether it's drawer slides or whether it's on a hinge. You can also take your bit like this. These are all posi drive. This is European hardware, but now it's popular all around the world. Mm -hmm. But that's where it started. And this is where all your adjustments are. You can see the little extra lines on there. I know a lot of people who have installed these over the years and didn't use a posi drive and they were frustrated because they, they didn't know the difference between posi and Phillips. And you have the same sizes, one, two, and three. Sometimes you have a double lot on the Phillips but you always choose your bit tip one, two, or three inside there so you don't have that camming. And with a posi drive, you have more torques than Phillips. All right. All right, Sedge, what's the difference between a Robertson's and a square drive? Okay, so that's called stirring the pot. They're the same <laughs> thing, but Robertson's, uh, and everybody from Canada will always say Robertson's were invented in Canada than they were. So there's, it's called the Robertson's square drive. Okay. okay. They made they became really popular in cabinet making, uh, probably about 20, 30 years ago here in the states. Uh, they're fantastic, but there's a reason why. Everybody, when they look at a square drive, come in here, cameraman. Okay. They think, oh, it's just a square, and you can put any square bit tip in there. Well, there's a difference because it's the square, but it's actually tapered, and the reason. And I'm going to put a bit in here. And this is, once again, you have number ones, twos, threes, and so on. Okay. Okay. But when you put a square drive on there, the taper comes into play just like this, because guess what? Now, that's not a magnetic tip, but it holds on there. Oh, wow. So it holds it, which is really nice. The one thing I will suggest when you're using a square drive, okay, and say you're using a tip. So when you're using a square drive, I had this which locks into here, it's Central Tech. If I was just using a typical magnetic tip, you gotta be careful using square drives because what happens is it gets stuck in there. Oh. Okay, because it's got really good uh, flats in there for torque. So what I always suggest is using a tip like this that actually locks that one inch in. It's magnetic and you won't keep taking that bit out and it, it gets frustrating. Gotcha. That's one of the reasons I, I'm switching to Torx in the Sedge Tool Shop. All right, Sedge, so why did we convert the Sedge Tool Shop to this style? It's becoming more and more popular in construction, okay. in cabinet construction, and on a construction site for decks or whatever. Um, that's a style pattern, right? Mm -hmm. How many points are there? Six. Very cool. They're known as Torx or, you ready? Hexa Lobula. <laughs> okay. Was, they developed in 1967. I got turned on to them probably about 10 years ago, and I haven't gone back. <clears throat> it just took me all this time. I remember early in the year, I actually bored out my traditional workbench to 20 mm -hmm. millimeter. Sometimes I wait too long. Don't wait. Organize your shop so you're using one style of screw, not a bunch of them. Now, you still need all the tips out there because... There's other people or other things that you have to work on in your house and everything that uses all the different styles. But if you can get it all down in the construction and go with one, you're not getting frustrated. So what I did is I reached out to a company this year and I bought a ton of screws. I got rid of all my other stuff for construction and actually two companies. This one I really like. I use them and I used to use them back in my shop in Fort Lauderdale with... Um, Phillips, okay, and also square drive. These are quick screws. <clears throat> you'll see they have this type of uh, point. It's a self-tapping, okay, and underneath here are the nibs, so the self-countersinking. I switched all my cabinetry screws over to them. The other one in construction I've switched over to is also Torx, okay, and they have the nibs underneath, and they're self-tapping, and these are JR G R K. Both of them are phenomenal brands. Go with them. Yep. I use this for cabinetry. This is construction. Remember the square drive I was talking about? Yes, sir. This is one of the great features. This holds the screw so I don't have to hold the screw while trying to put it in and tearing up my fingers. I can put this in. It self-taps. I put the right pressure in there. I use an impact when I'm doing uh, cabinetry. I can't tell you enough how this has simplified the shop. It's organized it. Mm. 
Uh, the other thing is because you have those six points on there, you will have little or no cam out on torques. So you eliminate a lot of frustration. I tell everybody, switch over, just do it. Yeah, you may have a bunch of screws, get rid of them <laughs> and get organized. Yep. And such, are there different sizes of torques? <laughs> yeah, there is. Uh, you don't need all of them. But in electronics, they go all the way down. I think the one uh, for cell phones is uh, T7. They're usually labeled. Uh, you'll see it, just get a good set. I didn't know this, they go all the way down to T1. Most of the time in uh, cabinetry, uh, machinery that I've worked on, um, I, I'm usually good with a T15 to a T40. But I didn't know they go to T1. 100. What? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> crazy, crazy how Torx has taken over everything. And I really believe it's the less cam out on them. Mm -hmm. All right, Sage, what's this? Something that every shop needs, every homeowner needs, and it's a specially bit tip set. Yes, you get your Torx in here and your flats or your slots, some Phillips. I think there may be a posi drive. But in here, you have hollow point Torx, hollow point hex, hex bits. I'll go over those with you. Okay, they go all the way down. Very, very small. I have metric in here and I have imperial in here. This is very inexpensive and you'll use this set or one bit in there every two or three years. But when you need it, you need it. It's a hex. Oh, and you see these more often nowadays in furniture building, right, Chris? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I Ikea, right? Yep. Always have a set of hexes that you can use, uh, whether metric or imperial, mm -hmm. okay? And make sure you have this because this speeds up a lot of assembly time putting it in a cordless drill. Oh, heck yeah. All right, so what's up with these? Okay, so we're outside, and I actually needed one of these. This is a specially bit tip set where you have Torx, hollow point Torx, but more so you'll see these in electronics. These are hollow tip um, uh, hexes. And what's important is this is my uh, meter and, uh, for cable uh -huh. and I need to get in there. And uh, Chris, I don't know if you can see this. See, there's a little point sticking out. Yeah. So you choose one of these bit tips and you can actually put it right in there and you can access that. Oh. In other words, they don't want you trying to open this up, okay? You'll see them in gas lines. Mm -hmm. So you can be very cautious and you're starting to see more and more of the hollow bit torques or hollow tip hexes and electronics. Huh. A set like this is a value because you will uh, use it once every two or three years, but when you need it, you need it. Now, <laughs> earlier, this is the confusing part, earlier, and this is the stuff that drives me crazy. We were talking about, why can't they use one bit tip for everything? This panel here, you have the hollow point hex mm -hmm. and you have a slotted. That's the stuff that drives me crazy. So you always need the different bit tips. Wow, uh, I'll tell you what, Sedge. I'm glad we converted to just the one style because it gets pretty confusing after a while. It does, doesn't it? it does. Oh my God, I can't tell you how many times I've been up, and I've said this already, but I've been up on a ladder and I go to put something together and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Why couldn't that person have used one screw head? So hopefully this will help you get organized in your shop and it has made a huge difference to us here, oh, just yeah. going straight to Torx. Yeah, do we have other screws that we have to use and we need other bit tips? And also don't forget to get that specialty uh, bit tip set. I'll have it down in the comments and a link to that. So check it out. Hey, I'm gonna say this, and I, I don't think I've ever said this in a video. Will you subscribe if you're still watching? We need some subscribers. Hey, as we always say, <laughs> be positive. Stay sharp, wicked, wicked sharp.